this is lesson number three. Lesson number three is number. Well, it's part one of number anyway, because I'll have to do a second video on, on number later on. Just a few pieces of information about number that you really should be comfortable with. And hopefully you met quite a few of these things a good few years ago, and you just need reminding. First off, let's look at ratio. Ratio is the connection between two pieces or more of information. I think the best way to remind you about ratio is to look at a couple of examples or a couple of questions. So let's look at the first one. Sharing in a ratio. Now that word sharing is in fact a very good word from way back in the junior school. Because when you're doing ratios you are in fact sharing. So let's look at this one. 60 pounds is divided between Alan and Bob, which conveniently is A and B. And 60 pounds is divided between Alan and Bob in the ratio of 5 to 7. 5 to 7. So you can either write the word TO or the two dots representing 2. So 60 pounds between Alan and Bob in the ratio of 5 to 7. Now if you add these two values together, you get 12. That means to say that there are going to be 12 parts. In other words, Alan's going to get 5 twelfths, 5 out of 12 parts, of the 60 pounds. And Bob is going to get 7 parts out of the 12 of the 60 pounds. And this is one way of looking at ratios, by sharing it using these fractions. Now 1 twelfth of 60 1 twelfth of 60 would be worked out by working out 12 into 60. So 1 twelfth of 60 is 5. So 5 twelfths of 60 must be 5 of those 5s. Again, if 1 twelfth of 60 is 5, then 7 twelfths of 60 must be 7 5s of 35. You can add those two values together and you've got your 60 pounds. So in other words, in that share out of a ratio of 5 to 12, Alan gets 25 pounds and Bob gets 35 pounds. Now the only difference between ratio questions is what the basic information is about. This was about an amount of money being shared between two people. Let's look at this question here. Money is divided between Alan and Bob. So this time we don't know how much is being shared. We're just told that some money is divided between Alan and Bob. So we've got A to B again in the ratio of 5 to 7. So there's still 12 shares all together. But it says Alan gets 60 pounds. So if Alan is getting 60 pounds, that means to say that 60 pounds is in fact 5 twelfths of the amount of money. In other words, 5 twelfths of the amount of money that's being shared up is £60. So this time, if we take the £60 and divide by 5, because Alan's getting 5 twelfths of the money, and 5 twelfths of the money is £60, if we divide this by 5, that is one twelfth of the amount of money. In other words, one twelfth is twelve pounds. Now Bob himself, he's getting seven twelfths. So he's getting seven of these twelve pounds. So seven twelfths is seven lots of twelve. Seven twelves, eighty-four. So we've worked out how much Bob's got. So in this question, we didn't know the total amount that's being shared up. We just got how much... Alan got. And from that we worked out how much one share was worth. And then from that we worked out how much Bob got. It does just need a very clear mind thinking logically. If of course any of this is too quick, always remember you can replay these lessons. But I need to carry on. So let's have a look. At another possibility. Sharing the money between Alan and Bob. Alan and Bob win some money. 
Alan and Bob win some money. They decide their share, they share their winnings in the ratio of 5 to 7. Same ratio. But this time, Bob gets £28. Bob gets £28. Now remember, there are 12 shares altogether. Bob is getting 7 of the shares. Therefore, in fact, 28 is 7 twelfths of the money. There are 12 shares altogether. Bob gets 7 of them. Therefore, he's getting 7 twelfths. Therefore, 7 twelfths is, in fact, the £28. So this time, if we take the £28 and we divide it by 7, we'll work out what one share is worth. One share is worth £4. Therefore, Alan's going to get 4 fives of 20. And this question says, how much did they win? So you've got two ways of looking at that, I suppose. You could add together Alan's share and Bob's share. That's how much they won, and that's how much they shared between them. Or, in fact, you could go back to say, right, one share is £4. Twelve shares would be 12 out of 12, the whole lot. Therefore, 12 falls of 48. Ratio questions need clear mind and thinking logically. But we need to move on to other things in arithmetic or number. Let's look at percentages now. Now percentages can be worked out so many different ways. We need a way to be personally comfortable with it. So I hope I'm going to show you ways that you'll be happy with. First off, we also need to appreciate Sometimes we'll have to work out percentages without a calculator because there's a non-calculated paper. So we need to be happy with working out percentages without a calculator and also with a calculator. So let's look at percentages without a calculator. Suppose we have to find 15% of £120. One method is to appreciate that 15% actually means 15 out of 100. That's what 15% means. So 15% of 120 can be worked out by working out that calculation if you're happy with multiplying fractions. The other method is to split it into parts. For example, we should be able to work out what 10% of any amount very easily. But in this particular case, I hope extremely easy. 10% of £120, if I drop that naught off the end, I've got the answer is £12. 10% of £120 is £12. 5% of £120 must be half of that amount, half of 12. Therefore, if we add these two together, we're working out the 15% required which is therefore £18. So another method is to split the percentage down and work out parts and add them up, which actually can be an extremely good method on a non-calculated paper. The third way is to appreciate that a percentage can be written as a decimal. 15% is the same as 15 over 100, is the same as 0.15. So we can, in fact, work it out like that. You need to be happy with fractions with that method, and you need to be happy with decimals with that method. Moving on, percentages without a calculator. 